Russia Ukraine war has entered its end game. But how will the war end? Will a great power game follow? Or will there be tight negotiations between Moscow and Kiev? Let's find out. Hi and welcome to TFI Global, the foreign affairs and geopolitical analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host Atul Mishra and in this video, I will tell you how the Western media keeps taking you all for a ride without mentioning the fact that the Russia-Ukraine war is almost over. Let's begin. Regardless of what Western media feeds you, Russia has overwhelmed the Ukrainian forces and the Russia-Ukraine war has entered its endgame just within days of Russia's full-scale invasion into the Eastern European country. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, left with no options, has finally agreed to hold talks with Russia, which tacitly gives a cue that Kyiv has given up. So how will things shape up after the war? Who will emerge as the winner? Who will emerge as the loser? Hey, it's me, Atul. I started this channel. We started small, we went big. Suddenly, the whitey police was after us. We dodged and ducked, but the algos got us really bad. So we designed our own app. It's free. We never asked for money, we never will. But the droid called us too sensitive and blocked us. We still have an Apple app. Join us and fast. Because if you don't, we will cease to exist. Check out the link in the description. Let's face it, Donbass is at the core of the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war. The small region is located in southeastern Ukraine and is composed of two provinces, Luhansk and Donetsk. Both these regions had declared independence from Ukraine after the annexation of Crimea by Russia in 2014. And recently, Russian President Vladimir Putin formally recognized them, which was followed by the ongoing war. Donbass, a resource-rich region with the largest coal reserves in Ukraine and a wide range of metallurgical industries, was the main geopolitical post that Moscow was in pursuit of. Ethnic Russians constitute about 40% of the people in Luhansk and Donetsk. The predominant language spoken, being Russian, gave another case in hand for Putin to annex the Donbas region. So as and when the war ends, Russia is certain to keep Donbas under its administration. This is the other big geopolitical goal, Snake Island or Ziminye Island. A small border patrol outpost in the Black Sea has been captured by the Russian Navy and Putin will not let it go. Why? Well, the island is important for two reasons. It brings Russian military infrastructure right at the gates of NATO, as Moscow will look directly at Moldova, Bulgaria and Romania from the Snake Island. The other part is more important. Snake Island is located just 70 miles south of Odessa. The port of Odessa is one of the few warm water ports in the region and serves as an important hub for Ukrainian oil and gas exports to Europe and other parts of the world. So one big change that you can see is Russia taking effective control of the Snake Island and Odessa port. Why did the Russia-Ukraine war start? Well, forget everything else and listen to this. The ongoing war started because Putin did not want NATO coming to Russia's gates and paying no heed to the Russian concern. Biden kept pushing Ukraine to turn towards the Western world. Putin, in fact, feels that NATO has expanded way too much with countries like Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia joining the alliance. Anyhow, Ukraine kept asking NATO to make it a member of the cross-Atlantic alliance and when Putin had his plates full, it invaded Ukraine. So any peace deal or any post-war agreement between Moscow and Kiev will most likely include an express guarantee from Ukraine on never joining or even applying for NATO membership. The West is making a great hero out of Volodymyr Zelensky. Nevertheless, Putin loathes him. Even in the initial phase of the ongoing invasion, Putin even asked the Ukrainian military to take power into its own hands to overthrow the Zelensky regime and bring in a new leader following a fresh election who won't be bidding for the West. 
It is happening already, isn't it? A referendum was held in Belarus on Sunday, during which Belarusians voted to allow the country to host nuclear weapons and Russian troops. Belarus is a key regional ally for Russia and had also allowed Russian troops to use Belarusian borders for invading Ukraine from the north. Belarus had a number of Soviet nuclear warheads after the 1991 Soviet collapse, but it had then transferred them to Russia. Now, with the latest referendum in Belarus, Russia seems to be expanding its nuclear boundaries well beyond its geographical boundaries. Russian military firepower is going to get extended into Belarus that neighbors three NATO countries, namely Poland, Latvia and Lithuania. So Russia is therefore going to end the Ukraine war on a high, where it sees itself emerging as the clear winner amid raucous opposition from the West.